Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan, Sidi Faridun, for that beautiful uh, uh, talk, mashallah. You had so many gems. Um, some of the things that really uh, stood out are the three focuses that you had in terms of really modeling our homes to the prophetic model or trying our best to model our homes to the prophetic standard. So, you know, maintaining or looking at that the, the home and, and uh, doing the house cleaning, as you said, of the home, the, the cleaning of the heart, and then the cleaning of our sahba, our companions. Um, but the point that you made about happiness and becoming happiness, I actually wanted to um, kind of uh, speak about that for just a moment because even, mashallah, Heb and I, when we were just, uh, speaking earlier, we were talking about perspective, right? The perspective that we have in life really does shape our experience. And inshallah, she'll speak more on that point. But one of my favorite hadith, of course, is the hadith Qudsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana indi dhani abdi bi. And I love this hadith because it's very empowering. What Allah is telling us is, again, what you think of him, right, and, and uh, that extends to your circumstance, he will, of course, affirm. So if you have a positive outlook and you accept that uh, whatever you're going through, whether it's a tribulation, whether it's khair, um, blessing, whatever it is, that it because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that there's meaning behind it, that there's a purpose behind it, and you don't let your perspective turn from Allah, right? Because this is the nature of the dunya. When we don't have the right understanding of why we're in certain circumstances, we then are left to the whisperings of shaitan, the external right uh, evil that is outside of us, but also our own nafs, which will start to uh, whine and complain, and you just become very uh, nafsi, you know, in, in, in your understanding. You're not thinking of the greater uh, wisdom of why you may be going through something. So having that mind shift is really important, and that's why, um, again, when we look at this idea of how do we establish a prophetic household, another hadith that is really important for all of us to uh, to learn and to, under, uh, and to internalize is um, the hadith Indeed, all of you are a shepherd, and each of you is responsible for your flock. And this is another empowering hadith, because what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us? He's saying that he has given all of us leadership roles, and that includes men, of course, women, as well as children, Believe it or not, yes, even you have leadership roles. You have expectations um, that from you, within your household. Uh, and, and so defining those roles becomes now the next part of how we can bring some balance into our homes, right? Because leadership, of course, requires uh, to know what your role is. So if you know that you're a leader because Allah has appointed you a leader, he has told us that men are leaders over their, uh, in, their, in their households, over their families, and their responsibilities to maintain the, uh, their families. And then for women, their leadership role is to maintain their children and their household. And then of course for children, it's to help in the household and to take some of those burdens from their parents and to uh, be a part of the household. So immediately you set the tone of what? Two things, respect, Right? Respect is so essential in a household. Uh, in order for a, a household to have balance and to have peace, we have to have respect. And if we see each all of, if everyone sees one another as a leader and they see that they have an important role to play in the household, then naturally you will bring respect into the conversation, into the way you treat one another. So respect is essential. And the other really important quality is empathy. If we don't have either of these two qualities in our homes, which all of which we learn from the Prophet ﷺ, you will not find a single example of the Prophet ﷺ ever, of course, because he had the best of character, of ever speaking to anyone without respect. Even those who wished harm on him, subhanAllah, he had, because why? As, as uh, the saying of Sayyidina Isa, a vessel only pours out what it contains. He was incapable of putting out anything other than respect because he, that, he was pure. And so if we um, 
understand that, then we look to ourselves and, and hold ourselves accountable. So you will not find any example of him ever speaking to a child or a person of a different background. It doesn't matter. In a way where he put himself above them. Never. Even though he was the best of creation, the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if anybody had that, you know, if anybody could have done that, it should have been him, right? But he didn't do it. Why? Because he knew he, who he was with Allah and he didn't need to do that. And he also he's modeling for us that if you want to have uh, the, the households that are peaceful, you don't, need to com you, don't need to, you don't need to demand respect. You don't need to raise your voice. You don't need to uh, you know, uh, lead with, uh, with an iron fist and threaten and use charged language. You don't need to do that. If you are respectful, right, people will listen to you. So really watching the way that we talk to one another, and this is in every direction, from parent to child to spouse to spouse, every direction we need to restore respect in our homes, and we also need to restore empathy. And this is really important, especially as I see so many teens here. You know, earlier today I was with a group of teens and I did an icebreaker with them. I was getting to know them, so I asked them, tell me your name, Tell me your, uh, what's your favorite day of the week and why, and then tell me what's your happy place. And subhanAllah, the answers really touched my heart. Favorite day of the week, what, what do you guys guess? Knowing teens, what do you think it's going to be? Right, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, pretty predictable. Saturday and Sunday. The major with the exception of two people who said, I think, Monday and Wednesday, and even, uh, three people, Monday, Wednesday, and Tuesday, for very uh, different reasons. Everyone else said Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What do you think the reason why they love those days? Yes? There's no school. That was part of it. But there was another really beautiful reason. What is it? They get to stay home. Few reasons were given. One, it's time with family, which is really beautiful to hear. Two, they get to sleep in. Okay, Why do I mention this? Because I wasn't surprised. This is something that I have heard repeatedly for years from teenagers who are going through one of the hardest phases of life, that they feel that sleep, which is a human need, it's everybody needs rest, right, is something that they don't get enough of, and if they speak up, they're not respected. That, that is not seen as an important need. And I think it's, it's, it's really, we have to look, look to ourselves and really understand when a child, you know, who again is growing, development, they're developing, their brains are developing, just like an infant. You wouldn't wake up an infant, right, from sleep. You know that an infant or a toddler, they need their sleep, you let them have their naps. When they wake up, they wake up. But how many of us in our households don't have the basic empathy to respect this very basic human need, and basic by, in the sense of, if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this is on the bottom tier, right? We need food, we need water, we need air, we need rest, we need sleep. So if a child is coming to their parent and saying, I don't want to go to so-and-so, I don't want to do this because I'm really tired, can I please sleep? And the parent is, no, you have to go. Get up right now. And then knocking on the door and waking them up and being, you know, Irritated. Why? Because I have a schedule. I have something that I need to get done. Get up and do it right now, right this minute. What do you think is going to... What, it's a breakdown immediately of respect and empathy. There's no respect. That child has a need. And I say this because, again, I want to advocate for our youth. Sometimes these very basic things, they feel like no one's understanding them. And if you think about, although it seems like, okay, why is that a big deal? But does sleep not affect everything? Right? How many of us, when we don't get enough sleep, are not very pleasant to be around? Right? So when I hear the parents telling me about their teens who are, have an attitude problem, who are grumpy, who don't want to talk to them, who don't want to sit and, you know, have dinner with the family, or who just, they can't figure out, I have to point them to these very basic things. Are they resting? Are they getting enough rest? Oh, yeah, here and there. And, you know, then, then you start, like, questioning and you realize if you made these little simple adjustments of fulfilling each other's basic needs, what do you need? Do you, are you okay? Checking in with them. Are you resting? Do you need anything? Or 
anything else, because th there's a lot of things that are going on, you know, on both sides. And this goes both ways, by the way. Parents obviously have needs too. They may be tired and exhausted as well, but they don't think that you can help them. But what would you do with teenagers? I mean, um, how do you think your parents would respond if you went up to them after they just cooked dinner or came home from a long day's work, your father, when he enters the household? And you empath empathize, realizing that he was out all day long and a long commute. We live in an area where there's usually long commutes for a lot of our parents. So you have the, you know, the, the, the fatigue of just being out all day and then on top of that, that, and then you have to come home and get dinner ready, help with homework. How do you think your parents would feel if you just went up to them and said, hey, dad, are you okay? Can I get you anything? Or mom, can I help you with anything? Do you need like a shoulder rub? Maybe I can give you a shoulder rub after dinner. How do you think they would feel? Suddenly they feel seen. Suddenly they feel appreciated. Suddenly they feel validated. Those exchanges, as simple as they seem, can do incredible wonders to repair some of the breakdown that we have in our households. Because again, we live in a time where everybody's, you know, just doing their own thing. Kids have their homework, they have their sports, they have their routines, their clubs, parents are at work, they have to go shop, they have this and that to do, and nobody's really seeing each other. Nobody's really stopping and appreciating one another. And then offering these two things that we are taught in our deen from the very beginning. If you're you know, looking at any part of our, our faith, you will find these themes of how we, we speak to one another should always be with love, muwadda, with respect, right? With empathy, with compassion. You will find it throughout the Quran, throughout the Hadith, but if we don't have that in our own households, then are we surprised when we find a breakdown in communication? Should we be surprised? Of course not. So really essential that we first and foremost understand our roles, that each of us have leadership qualities, all of us, and that should uh, c command right respect from uh, others as well as that we give back, right, respect to everyone in the household, and then that we also empathize, inshallah.